Let me read to you a passage from the first chapter of St. Luke's Gospel, verses 26 to 38. It's the Gospel for the Feast of the Annunciation on March the 25th. St. Luke writes, The angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said, and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb, and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great, and will be called Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month for her who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. That's from Luke chapter 1, verse 26 to 38, for the Feast of the Annunciation on March the 25th. We think of Mary and her child. One of the most common institutions of societies and cultures is that of the birthday. On a person's birthday, we celebrate the life and presence of one who is loved and venerated, be he a member of the family, a work colleague, a leader, or whatever. It affords the opportunity to express in a special way appreciation for a person, and on the day, something of the origins and story of his life are remembered. And so it is altogether natural that both Matthew and Luke, in their respective fashions, narrate the birth of Jesus Christ. Their perspectives are different, but in each case an angel of the Lord is sent to announce the coming of the child. In Matthew the angel speaks to Joseph, in Luke the angel speaks to Mary. Our Gospel passage from Luke on this Feast of the Annunciation describes the dramatic appearance of the angel Gabriel before the Virgin Mary, to tell her with the utmost respect what God wished of her. There could be hardly greater or more wonderful news than what he was sent to announce. The angel's words offer an exalted description of the child who in God's plan was about to be conceived. Undoubtedly his utterances, and he may have said even more than are given here, sank deeply into the mind and memory of Mary, and were transmitted years later to Luke as he investigated the history of Christ's infancy. Let us often read the words of the angel as if they are being told to us by Mary, the one to whom they were addressed. Let us think of what the angel says of Christ, and let us pray to be able to contemplate him with love and understanding. Firstly, the angel states the child will be great. There is no qualification to this, no limit given to the word. It is a term of boundless implication. He is not simply to be great before men, nor even simply great before God. No, all that needs to be said is that he will be great. And it reminds, of how, or it reminds us of how God is great. Mary, during her visit to Elizabeth shortly after, prays a prayer in which she proclaims the greatness of the Lord. The Lord is great. 
and so is the child being heralded here. He is great, and he is to be the Son of the Most High. Reading these words of the angel in Luke's text years later, any Christian would have known what they signified. They conveyed the revelation that God the Son was about to become man. He will be David's descendant and the inheritor of his throne. In him the prophecy given to David about his everlasting kingdom would be fulfilled. The great son of David was soon to be born, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. God's eternal kingdom was on the horizon, and the king who would rule over it was near at hand. So as we read these simple and stirring words of the angel, let us, like Mary, allow them to sink deeply into our hearts, giving fruit to a profound faith and appreciation for Christ. But let us also contemplate the one to whom those words were addressed, for the angel himself would have contemplated her with respect and wonder. She was full of grace, and the Lord held her in utter favour. Such is the one who is Christ's mother and our mother too. Let us ask the Holy Spirit to help us appreciate and love each of the protagonists in our gospel scene today, the Christ child in the first instance, and then Mary, our all-holy mother. Let us also learn to love and venerate the angels, and in particular our own guardian angel whom the Church assures us we have at our side as God's gift. Above all, let us resolve to live, at our, live out our lives following in the footsteps of Jesus and his first and greatest disciple, Mary his mother.